back to lecture number 12, part 2. Here we are going to talk about the file handling, how we can handle the files inside our programs. Because not all the time we are asking the user to give us the values, input data, and the pro program is always we have some data, we are processing something on it, and then we are giving some output. Okay? So we need that data. Data can come from the users that we have seen so far. The user is giving some input, very tiny, maybe in first name, last name, age, uh, some information about the product and so on. But if we want to have the access to the larger amount of data, it means that we need to look differently. Okay? So we can access the data which is available in the files. That could be a text file, that could be an image file, that could be a video file. But definitely, if it is a simple text, handling is quite simple. But if it is a video or audio, then hard handling, yes, it is not, I'm not saying that we can't handle it, but the handling will be a difficult one. We can process it, but we need to, because we can read the information byte by byte from the file. One byte, that's a binary information. How we are going to manipulate it, it is an audio file. It is going to be manipulated or the process in a different way. If it's a text file, we can read byte by byte, but maybe that particular specific text file has the ASCII information. ASCII means one byte is actually representing a character. But if it is a Unicode, then I think that now the Unicode value is four bytes. Unicode, one Unicode character is actually represented inside the memory as four bytes. So if we are reading byte by byte, it means that we need to combine the four bytes that we have read, convert that into the Unicode character or manipulate it like that. So this is a one way to do the thing. Reading a byte because one byte is actually representing a ASCII character, that will be a character, no problem, that's fine. But if it is a Unicode one, you need to combine four bytes in a specific order so that we can generate or we can create that character that we want to show on the screen. Okay? If it is a audio, then definitely the processing will be totally different. The first, I think, uh, 112 or some bytes, this is the header of the file. If that is a header of the file, how we are going to process it? Where are the exact information of the image are there that we need to show on the pixels by pixel on the screen? So then the processing will be different depending on the, the file type that we are trying to read into our program. <coughs> So the first thing is create a text file. Yeah, I mean, as I told you that if that file does not exist, then it will generate a file not found exception. So first of all, that except that uh, what you can say that that particular specific file should be there so that we can read it. Reading from it and writing to a text file, appending a file. So there are different ways to do things. We have the system.io, that's a library which is handling these kind of inputs and outputs. Okay? We have a stream reader, we have a stream writer. System.io, that's a namespace or the library which, which can contain the multiple uh, files which can help us to read the information from the files. Stream reader, stream writer. Stream is just like, you know, uh, from if you look at the water stream, that water is traveling from one place to the other. So the source is a file in this case. Stream, reader, we are reading the file. Source is a file and the data is streaming towards our program. So that's why we call stream reader. And that information is coming as a stream of water or stream of bytes, you can say that. Okay, stream reader. When you say stream writer, now it has reversed the source and the destination. Now source is our program. The start of the information is the our program. And then byte by byte we are writing in the file. Now the destination and the source has changed. Program is a source, file is the destination where we are writing the information as a stream of bytes. Okay? So stream reader to read the information 
from the file. Writer mean we are writing the information. So, there are two different way or there are multiple or what you can say that multiple uh, modes in which we can open the file, read only mode. It means that we can only read the information in the file. If we try to write something on the file, not allowed. It will generate an exception. Understand? If we are opening a file for in a in a write mode, in a write mode, what will happen? We open the file, we can read all the information. When we try to write it, it will write from the start. Whatever is written already there, it will be overridden. It will be overwritten written on that one. Delete the previous information, add the new information. Create kind of a new file. <coughs> Append mode mean that whatever that file exists, okay, file exists, we open that particular specific file and now whatever information we are going to write, it will be added at the end of the file and the previous information will be still there. Okay? So, there are different modes, there are other modes as well that how we can open the file. The file input mean we are reading the information from the file. So, again system.io we need to have that particular specific file and then we are stream reader, my stream reader that is again a class that has been defined inside the system.io and this is the name of the variable that we are identifier. We can select whatever we want and there is a new and then we are giving the address. This string actually is the address, it could be a file name. It means that in the current directory, it will try to find that file, file.txt. And if it exists, it will open it. If it does not, it may create it. Understand? So, to use that one, so we have opened. So, this string x, it could be a like d colon slash this particular directory slash this directory slash this one. So, it could be a complete address. It is not necessarily that it should be a file name. It can be an address as well. And then we need to manipulate, go to that particular specific directory, open that particular specific directory, find that particular specific file and open it. And that will all done by the stream reader. You don't, know it. You don't need to worry about that one, that how it is going to be happened. But if you are trying to develop a uh, what you can say that uh, application which is more kind of an explorer which is like you know opening different directories and looking at the contents inside it showing uh, listing all the files which are present in that one if you are trying to develop a uh, file explorer on your own but definitely in that case you need to more details about the file handling because there is a class that called file file directory so we need to understand that but right now if you just give the address and the name of the file here in the, the string, that particular stream reader is going to open that particular specific file for you. Okay, this is the file, uh, okay, we want to open it. Class, this is the object name, this is we are class constructor, we are trying to execute providing the name of the file or the address of the file. We have these methods, read, read line, read to the end and close. When you say read, it will return the ASCII value, read byte by byte. When you say read line, read a line of characters from the stream, read line, complete line, unless until that new, correct, new line character occurs, new line is also a character, slash or slash, uh, new, new line, I mean line feed and the slash or go back, something like that. So, it is also a character, combination of the characters. Okay. Close mean, read to the end mean, starting from the first byte of the, the file, read till the end, unless and until we reach the EOF. It is also a character which represent the end of the file. To read from the first byte to the last byte. Close mean, close that connection, close that stream, huh? that stream that has been opened between the file, that is a desk source and our program that destination, that stream has been opened, stream of the bytes has been opened, close it. Because unless and until we close that particular specific stream, operating system will say that this particular specific file is being used by some application. Understand? So, to clear that status, we say close it. 
Now the operating system know that this file is no longer being used by someone else. Maybe someone else can use it. <coughs> Reading from the file, again we are generating the stream. Then we say that string text is equal to dot read. When say read dot to string, and then we say show that particular message. So if we look at that, this is our file which contains the in the first line apple, second line banana, then kiwi, orange, and or, uh, mango, and then it is actually represent giving me 65. 65 is actually the ASCII value of the A. So it is not showing me the A. Actually, it is showing me that particular specific ASCII value. Okay, and the same thing when we say uh, deleted from the file deleted a we have deleted the a from the file and then we try to read this to execute the same code it should give me the 112 that is the ascii value of the p small p and again we have that one stream class reading line so read line which will read the complete line starting from the first line apple then brana then kiwi and so on so it is going to read each line and show that particular specific adding that particular specific lines into the list box okay read to the end now when you say read to the end it's actually reading all the but character by character so a p p l and and adding all those characters into the list box <coughs> Okay, so all the characters of that particular specific are added one by one. Close mean that we want to close that particular specific connection between the file and your program. Important if we do not close the stream object, the file will be logged. As I told you, operating system when some program open a file, operating system flag that particular specific file that this particular file is being used by some specific program. And if we have that part of like locking system, nobody else will be able to use that particular file unless and until you close it. Okay, so that is why. And if due to some exception your program has terminated in, in uh, before it can close that file, so what will happen? That file is flagged by the operating system that it is being used. And then that is why we put that particular specific code, close the file and the finally block. So that whatever we are doing, if we are successful, okay, we need to close that particular specific file. Create a file, how we can do that? Right click, create a new file. Uh, set the file properties. We can right click on that particular, we can say make it this particular specific file is executable, it is read only, it is read and write different permissions of the files. So, yeah, right click on that text file and the tree structure uh, in it, its properties, and then we can go into that particular specific um, custom tools. I mean, properties, and then we can select that. I mean, this is something. Uh, allowing the permission, you know. If you allow some specific user only to uh, to access that file, only that user can access. Otherwise, all other users will not be able to do that. So these are some permissions there. File reading using the stream reader. So again, this is a UI. We can load content. So actually, on the load button, we have written down that go that particular specific file, open it, and contents load in that particular specific text box. System.io namespace, click event method where we need to write that particular specific code to open that file. Opening mean does not need that we are going to read. So once we open the file, it just open the connection between the, your program and you need to make your logic how you are going to read it. You read it byte by byte, you are reading a line by line, you are reading from to the end. So you need to do that thing. Stream reader will only create a connection between the app, app, uh, file and your application. Okay? It is not going to read it by yourself, by itself. You need to do that. I think you have already seen that things during that assignment. <coughs> 
So, so first of all we say that system.io we have that particular specific namespace we are creating that particular specific file this is like on the click event. So, we are only read creating a file reader okay. and then we uh, this is a okay this is a class load click file not this one this, that should be come here huh, at this one. Uh, stream reader is a class this one is the name of the object here we are creating the asking that particular specific uh, what you can say that the constructor to be executed providing the uh, name of the file which file need to be opened. Okay. So, we have created that particular specific uh, string a fruit dot read line read line mean it will read only one line till the first new line character list box dot add item. So, it will add each and every line inside the list box and then here we have while not fi uh, fruit file reader dot end of stream. It means the file reader has not reached the end of the file character or the end of the file because EOF is a specific character which is present in each and every file to mention that this is the end of the file. Okay. So, that particular specific file reader if it has not reached the end of the file continue reading that particular specific file line by line. So, we are saying that we have not reached the end of the file check it every time if it is not the end of the file read the line put that line into the list box go back and check have we reached the end of the file no again read the line put it in the list box and go back. So, this logic you need to develop this particular specific part only open that stream. Now, how you are going to use that stream between your program and the file that is you, you need to write that logic. Okay. Yeah, I mean it will continue and at the end make sure once you have finished reading the file you close that particular specific file. Okay. So, this is the complete program we open the file we read that particular specific in the while loop and at the end we close that particular specific file after reading all the contents from the file. <coughs> file output, output mean that we are trying to write something in the file and then here we say that stream reader again stream writer rather than reader we say writer we are writing on in the file. Now, the source of information is coming from your program and that is going towards the file okay. and then new stream and again this is our uh, constructor and again we are providing the file name. It could be a address complete d colon slash my folder slash new file dot txt and then after that we are saying something true. If we do not say true it will overwrite that particular specific file if it is already exist. Okay. Class object constructor. So, we also have a close method, we have a write method, we have a write line, write mean only write one byte by byte, write line mean write a complete line. Again we are saying that stream writer writer is equal to new d colon slash slash info dot txt and true mean that it is going to append the file to mean append the file. If the file already existed over there it will open that particular specific file and add this information at the end of the line end of the file understand. So, this true will make it append and if there is no true default value is false it means that it will override the previous file if it already exist. Okay. And then of course, we are writing that particular specific lines. When you write something like this write apple it will take that stream of app, uh, stream of the characters and write those file and without putting the new line because we say write we did not say write line. So, it will just add those characters inside the file. So, apple banana and cherry in together in one line. Then you say write line it means that it is going to write each and every string in the new line go to the new line go to the new line go to the new line. 
And then of course, we need to close that writer, otherwise operating system will consider that this particular specific file is still in the use by some application and lock it down. Writing file stream, uh, the okay. so here you can say that save the content, give the file name here, provide a file name and then save the content mean that first we imp import this that particular specific namespace on the click event, create that click event and then create a stream or writer object and then we say that, uh, okay, I think that we are telling uh, that we provide some information here. We type something, whatever we want and then it will save mean, it will go into that particular info.txt file and save those information over there. And then as we are putting the true here, it is going to be a pen. First time, if it does not exist, it will create it and whatever information you want to put over there, it will put. Next time, it will not override the previous information, it will add the new information at the end of the file. So that is the true purpose mean. Second parameter defines whether text should be appended to the file, okay. Stream writer automatically creates the file if the file does not exist in the specific location. When we are reading, the file should be there. But again, we have different modes to opening the file. It could be a possibility that if it does not exist, open it or create it, even we are reading it, okay. Get the text box contents and write it to the text file, that is what we need to do. So we get the information from the text uh, box and write that inside the uh, file. Buff can be done as below, uh, we get the first, uh, get the information from the text box inside the string and then write the string over there. You do it one step or do it in two steps, doesn't matter. Close the stream, of course, whenever we are done with that particular specific stream or the file, we close it, okay. So run the program, I think that we can just skip that particular. We, we also have something like that, uh, stream reader, we are reading line, yeah, we can find it. Where we need to find that particular specific file which we have created. Actually, in your uh, project folder, we have a bin and inside the bin, we have a debug. So, wherever your file, especially the writer one, it should go into that one, you know, you, 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 will, you will find those files inside this one. And if you are trying to find it here in the main folder, you will not be able to do that you will not be able to find it. And I think we have seen that particular specific problem. The person has put that particular specific file in the main folder and they said, it, we can't read it, we can't read it, it does not have those information. We are writing that information over there, but it is not there. Why it is not there? Because it is going into a different folder, okay. It is going to the main folder, bin and inside the debug, where you can find that particular specific file. And then we can uh, just double click, on, I mean double click on that particular specific file, open it, no read and write access, we can change the permissions. Uh, for example, we do not allow that particular specific program to read or write that particular specific file. So what will happen? When that particular program is try to open it, operating system will enforce that writes and say, though you do not have the permission, which means it will generate a runtime exception. So try catch block, so whenever we are trying to open it, if it file does not exist, file not found exception, so we can try to. Again, we are using the exception, the general class, the parent class, so all the exceptions can be catch. Okay, file or not exist, so we can also check file, look at it file dot exist, file is a class which is in the uh, system dot IO class, IO, IO library and that dot exists. So it will tell me true or false, okay. So we can check that particular specific thing that if the file exists in that particular specific location where we are trying to find it or not. If it is not, if it is true, otherwise no. Uh, so this is the uh, the file opening dialog. We can also have that dialog rather than you know 
giving the exact location where that particular specific file as a hard coded thing, we can use the file open file dialog. We can locate that particular specific file and this particular dialog will only give us a string location and the file name only. It is not going to open that file for us. It is not going to do anything for us. It will help us to locate a specific file and select that name. So it will give us the only the string value where that file is and what is the name of the file. That's it. It is not going to open it. So common properties file name and we have some filters. Show dialog, open file, uh, get the uh, uh, file name from the dialog and open file by using the method that we have learned. Okay. So what we have, so we say variable, I am creating that particular specific dialog box, so new dialog and then I say that dialog dot filter. Filter mean that maybe there are multiple different types of files exist in that folder. I say that I only want to see the txt files or the dot cs files, dot cs are the c sharp code files. Don't show me the exe files, don't show me the image files, don't show me the any other files. So it will filter that particular specific thing that what type of files are going to be displayed inside the open dialog box. So that will help us to filter all the other files like .pdf files, it will not be shown in that open dialog box. Okay, And then boolean and I put a comma, this one here that it could return me now. You just open that one and just cl close it, that cross button, close it. You didn't do anything. What will happen? That will return me a null value. Okay, So, so true or false normally, but it could be a null value. Okay, So that's why we put that particular specific question mark over there. So it will open that particular specific dialog and look at that. It will only show us the txt files and if I just try to look click on that one and select the CS files, it will show me the CS files, uh, program.cs in my program. Okay, we have a video. I mean, it just show you that, is it working? No. Come on. No? I mean, it's, it's more like that it will show you that you click on that particular specific .txt, select the CS files, it will show only the CS files through here. Of course, it will show the folder because they are not at file types. So, no? Just, just one moment, maybe I'm trying to, what you can say that, uh, no? It does not ask me anything. And then we have the uh, uh, open file dialog. So that is the how we can. So we have created a file dialog, we select the filters and then we show that particular specific file dialog. So if the result is true, it means that we have selected a specific file. Now this particular specific file name will only give me the name that is going to be the string value that we need to provide to the stream reader as an input when we are creating it. Okay? So here we say that file name and now we can check file dot exist. Is the file exist in our in that particular specific location that we is coming in that string we are mentioning in that string. So it will just say that check yes. If it is true then we are opening that particular specific file and then uh, we, we are creating a stream reader, then we say that string builder and then we are reading the files, uh, reading the information from that particular specific file and putting that into the string builder and then we say label dot content is equal to dot string and stream reader dot close. So everything is go into that particular specific ac actually the label individual. So actually that is coming up here. So I have read a CS file because I have read a CS file, it show me all the code system uh, using system Microsoft dot uh, Win32 and then system and so on. So it will show me that and then the code actually I have read the CS file. Okay. Saving a file dialog, 
This similarly, we can locate a specific file that where we want to save it and give, a, give it a name or something. And then again, that particular specific dialog will only give me the address. It will not give me anything else. Uh, just a string value, the file name, just like the open one. And then we need to write the code to write the information at that location or the file name that we have selected using the op save dialog box. So same thing, we create a di uh, dialog box. We select the filters that what type of information or files we want to see. And now this time I put that CS file before. When I say it's CSV file, this is the default one, and then it will it will show me the dot CS files, and then I show dialog box, and then I read. If the result is true, it means we can get the file name, and we can get the file name, and after that we need to write. If the file exists, I want to append the information, and if file does not exist, I want to create a new info file one. So based on if the file exists or not, we can have a different logic. Okay, so here I'm just opening a stream reader. In the true, true mean it, I need to append it, and not true mean I just need to open that particular file, even if it does not exist. It will create a new file. Okay, and after that, after that, this particular specific if and else, I can write the logic what information I need to write into that. So after that if else, uh, I open a stream reader. Oh, sorry, stream writer, and then I am putting that string dot. Ucol is a Polytechnical Institute. BICT is one of its degree program. We are studying uh, D100, D101, uh, D100 programming fundamentals, and then variable lines data dot split. So we have put lines over there. So it will split that particular specific lines, and it means it will has three. These particular lines variable will have three lines of the information. So we say for each variable in line in the lines, for each line that is present in the lines, write line in the writer. And then at the end we say dot flush. Dot flush means that try to, uh, uh, for example, you are writing, you consider that this is your program and this is your file. So the informations are moving, it takes some time, you know, before those information can be written inside the file. It is a possibility because um, you say that write the information and then close it. Once you close that particular specific stream, the information which are in the buffer, which are still has not been written in the uh, file, they will lost, they will be lost. Because it takes some time before that buffer can be written on the depending on the size. Of course, if it is like few lines, a few things may be written quickly. But if you are writing a big amount of data, that's a possibility that because the operating system need to perform those actions, your program is not going to do that. And then operating system may be busy some other things and it put that particular specific thing in the buffers and that buffer is need to be written on this file. And if you close that stream, close, done. So the information which are in not written on the file, they are still in the buffer, lost. Understand my point? So that flush mean first read all the information inside the file and then close the connection. Understand? Because operating system is going to perform those actions. And we are dependent on the operating system. Maybe it is busy. Maybe we are writing a lot of information. They go into the buffer and then buffer is not empty and then you have close the connection, done. The information in the buffer are not going to be written on the file. So we say flush. Finish that particular specific operation. All the buffer information should be written in the file. Understand? So that's why we have that flush. Again, this is a video which I just recorded. Uh, make that one. I don't know if it's going to work or not. And apparently it not. And that is the end of our lecture 12, okay?